Good morning and welcome. Our service today is in remembrance of three architects, Ralph Adams Cram, Richard Upjohn, and John Lafarge. And our service begins on page 355 in your prayer book. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for the vision of Ralph Adams Cram, John Lafarge, and Richard Upjohn, whose harmonious revival of the Gothic enriched our churches with a sacramental understanding of reality in the face of secular materialism. And we pray that we may honor your gifts of the beauty of holiness given through them for the glory of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. The first reading is from Second Chronicles, verses six through twelve, twelve through twenty, chapter six, six verses twelve through twenty. Then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in the presence of the whole assembly of Israel and spread out his hands. Solomon had made a bronze platform five cubits long, five cubits wide, and three cubits high, and had set it in the court, and he stood on it. Then he knelt on his knees in the presence of the whole assembly of Israel and spread out his hands toward heaven. He said, O Lord, God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven or in earth, keeping covenant in steadfast love with your servants who walk before you with all their heart. You who have kept for your servant, my father David, what you promised to him. Indeed, you promised with your mouth and this day have fulfilled with your hand. Therefore, O Lord, God of Israel, Keep your servant, my father David, that which you promised him, saying, There shall never fail you a successor before me to sit on the throne of Israel. If only your children keep to their way, to walk in my law as you have walked before them. Therefore, O Lord God of Israel, let your word be confirmed, which you promised to your servant David. But will God indeed reside with mortals on earth? Even heaven in the highest heaven cannot contain you. How much less this house that I have built. Regard your servant's prayer and his plea, O Lord my God, heeding the cry and the prayer that your servant prays to you. May your eyes be open day and night toward this house, this place where you promised to set your name. And may you heed the prayer that your servant prays toward this place. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm appointed for today is Psalm 118, verses 19 through 29. It's found on page 762 in your prayer book. Page 762. Psalm 118, verses 19 through 29. And we'll say it together.
Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day, the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hosanna, Lord, Hosanna. Lord, send us now success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. God is the Lord. He has shined upon us. Form a procession with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will thank you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercies endure forever. The second lesson is from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. So he came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. For through him, both of us have access <clears throat> in one spirit to the Father. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on a rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell and great was its fall. Now, when Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were astounded at his teaching for he had taught them as one having authority and not as their scribes. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Ralph Adams Cram and Richard Upjohn were major architects whose influence on the design and decoration of Episcopal churches in the late 19th century and early 20th centuries is without equal. Cram was born on this day in 1863 in New Hampshire. And after an apprenticeship in Boston, Cram established his own firm in 1890 that specialized in designing churches. Heavily influenced by Anglo-Catholic principles, Cram was a leading proponent for an American Gothic 
revival. Buildings that were reminiscent of the ritual and structural dominance of the medieval period. Because of his many commissions for chapels and other buildings on college and university campuses, Cram is also remembered as the originator of the collegiate Gothic style. Among his works is the great Gothic nave of the Cathedral of St. John the Divine in New York City. Ralph Upjohn was born in England in 1802, where he trained as a cabinet maker. He immigrated to the United States in 1829 and eventually took up residence in Boston, where he worked as a draftsman, an art teacher, and eventually an architect. His first major commission was for a Gothic-style building for St. John's Episcopal Church in Bangor, Maine, a building that was later destroyed by fire. It was commissioned in 1839 to design and supervise the construction of a new building for the parish of Trinity Church, Wall Street, New York City. It was completed in 1846 and continues as Upjohn's most well-known accomplishment. Upjohn is also remembered for his sketchbooks of small wood frame designs for churches in rural towns and villages. These designs were widely copied and adapted. And as a result, Upjohn was among the early progenitors of Carpenter Gothic. John Lafarge was born in 1835 in New York City and was a devout Roman Catholic. As an artist, Lafarge worked in a variety of media, but is most often remembered for the murals that decorate Trinity Church Boston and the Church of the Ascension in New York City, among others. He also made significant contributions to ecclesiastical decoration in stained glass. I don't know whether you've been to any of these houses of worship that these three architects helped to create. I've had the joy of being in most of them and in marveling at their grandeur, the solid structures that are and they are, and to witness the solid ground upon which they stand. I have fond memories of taking youth and adults to the Cathedral of St. John the Divine in New York for an overnight program called Night Watch. Somewhere close to 100 teens would gather to spend the night in the Undercroft area and be part of a late night, of all sorts of late night activities that help them move a little closer to God and to understand the architecture used to build that magnificent cathedral. One of the recent programs that I went to, there was a homeless man who told his story about living on the streets in New York and how much the people of the cathedral had reached out to him and helped him, and he was now no longer on the streets. Quite a journey that he shared with these young people. The young people also learned about the faith through the centuries of people in whose memory stained glass windows and other artistic parts of the cathedral have been given. Things like symbolic memorials that honor firefighters and first responders for 9-11. St. John the Divine loudly shouts its physical glory to God and also tells the stories of people and how they reached out to the poor and the hungry and the disenfranchised since its beginnings. It is surely a house built on solid rock, literally and figuratively. And it still faces challenges today. After a Christmas event at the cathedral this past Sunday, an armed man was shout shooting from the steps and shouting to police, kill me. Police did fire 15 shots in return, and the man later died at a hospital why did this man choose those steps? And why did he want to die? Trinity Wall Street has also been a beacon in the city of New York for its care of the poor and refugees and the outcast. Members and volunteers from all around serve the first responders and firefighters in the aftermath of 9-11 with a place of respite and food and care for their weary bones. The little chapel of St. Paul's, which is part of 
Trinity Wall Street, directly across the street from the Twin Towers, was not damaged at all in that tragedy. Was it also a house built on solid rock? Jesus tells the story of two houses, one built on hard packed sand, which seemed substantial, and one built on solid rock. One builder was able to see with foresight the danger that might come in times of flood and winds. The logic of the wise builder calls us to look at the foundations in our time. What is sturdy to endure storms of our time? Jesus calls the people who gathered for his Sermon on the Mount to pay attention, to look deeply within at the foundations of their faith. That's a call that rings out to us these many years later on what kind of ground is our faith built? On what kind of ground is our church home built? These three architects lived and did their work with intention on building on solid ground. And remind us of how we might live and look deep within ourselves to check on the ground of our lives. Advent is really a good time to do just that. Amen. Service continues with the litany of healing prayers, confession, and unction. Let us pray and lift before God this day the names of those for whom we offer our prayers, especially those on our home prayer list. For Fred Andrew, Kathy Arthur, Bob Bellicosa, Catherine and Nancy Barasa, Virginia Baraki, Matthias Burke, Ray Burke. Benna Calder and family, Helen and Bill Chapman, Marion Clunan, Sally Cody, Maureen Cole, Tony and Sandra Custodio, Ray and Joan Daly, Lori Daniels, Roger Deacon, Terry and Tony Easter, Annie Eddy, Bill Ubercor, Darlene Ferris, Elliot Field, Dustin Fitzpatrick, Jill Furlan, Nancy Gould, Brad Garino, Mar Marianne Hannock, Donald Hibbert, Anne I, Adele and Terry Jackson, Deborah Knight, Dan Kucharski, Rich Lamlin, Elizabeth Lovell, Susan McCann, Joan and Bill McCann, Hannah Rumhill, Ray and Pam Ryan, John Schumacher, Dan Taylor Stipa, Trudy and Donna Smith, Brewster Staples, Peter Taylor, Sean and Jessica Wielden, Mary Whitehurst, Ginny Willis, and Chris Woodside. I invite you to name any for whom you might like prayers at this time, or either name them aloud or in the silence of your heart. God the Father, your will for all people is health and salvation. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. God the Son, you came that we might have life and that might have it more abundantly. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. God the Holy Spirit, you make our bodies the temple of your presence. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. Holy Trinity, one God, in you we live and move and have our being. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. Lord, grant your holy healing grace to all who are sick, injured, or disabled, that they may be made whole. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to all who seek your guidance and to all who are lonely, anxious, or despondent, 
a knowledge of your will and an awareness of your presence. Hear us, O Lord of life. Mend broken relationships and restore those in emotional distress, the soundness of mind and serenity of spirit. Hear us, O Lord of life. Bless physicians, nurses, and all others who minister to the suffering, especially those sickened with COVID-19, granting them wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to the dying peace and a holy death, and uphold by the grace and consolation of your Holy Spirit those who are bereaved. Hear us, O Lord of life. Restore to wholeness whatever is broken by human sin in our lives, in the nation, and in the world. Hear us, O Lord of life. You are the Lord who does wonders. You have declared your power among the peoples. With you, O Lord, is the well of life, and in your light we see light. Hear us, O Lord of life. Heal us and make us whole. Let us pray. Almighty God, giver of life and health, send your blessing on all who are sick and upon those who minister to them, that all weakness may be vanquished by the triumph of the risen Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and undone, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Savior of the world, by your cross and precious blood, you redeemed us. Save us and help us. We humbly beseech you, O Lord. This is now a time in our service when we normally would invite people to come forward to receive prayers of healing and blessing with holy oil. Since we're unable to be together at this time, please be assured that my prayers are with each of you, and I invite you to pray for all those in our parish and for all those who would normally be here on this Wednesday morning. The Almighty Lord, who is a strong tower to all who put their trust in him, to whom all things in heaven, on earth, and under the earth bow and obey. Be now and evermore your defense, and make you know and feel that the only name under heaven given for health and salvation is the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and also with you. Welcome once again. It's wonderful to have you here with with me in, uh, in the cyberspace. Look forward to the time when we can be together. In the meantime, please continue to pray for all those who are sickened in any way with COVID-19 and to all healthcare workers and emergency responders and all who care for them as we give thanks for a vaccine that is now beginning to be rolled out into our state and all over the, the country and the world. We give thanks for all of those minds that have made that happen. Our kind of sch schedule for Christmas has just come out. It was, uh, it was mailed out in an email this morning. So please pay attention to that. On Christmas Eve at 4 p.m., we do have the 
Essex Park available to us. I don't know yet whether it will be safe to do that, to do an in-person candlelight service, a very short candlelight service in the park on Christmas Eve. Stay tuned for more information about that. And we will gather only if we can be safe to be able to do that. Meanwhile, I keep you all in my prayers and please be, if you have not listened to the lessons in Carol's service, I strongly commend you to do that. It is wonderful to be able to see the faces and hear the voices of choir members and the voices of the whole congregation singing at last year's Lessons and Carols. There's music from last year and new music from this year and a beautiful display and wandering through the life of this parish with pictures. So please be sure to see that and watch it all the way to the end because the very, very end is really important to see. Now let us walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Amen. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. Our service continues on page 372 in your prayer book, page 372. And as always, our Eucharist is offered to the glory of God, and today especially in thanksgiving for the lives of these three architects who continue to remind us of the ways that we give thanks to God through the glorious beauty of art and, uh, and buildings build, built on stone. Ralph Adams Cram, Richard Upjohn, and John Lafarge. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks, for you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we say, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. 
Hosanna in the highest. We acclaim you, Holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners, freedom, to the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe, to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us, this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord, our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant to all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the name to the practice, praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, with patriarchs and matriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Now at this time, as we're unable to receive communion physically, we live with the assurance that we receive it spiritually. And pray with me. God of love and grace, of justice and peace, we give you thanks that in the sacrament of the altar, you assure us of your presence within us and within the body of Christ, the faithful through all the generations. Grant that we who have witnessed anew these holy mysteries though unable to receive the physical elements of the sacrament, may be moved by your indwelling spirit, ever more fully to embody your holy and life-giving presence, reshaping in your likeness the world around us, until we are gathered at last into the fullness of your glorious and eternal presence, through Christ our risen Lord. Amen. We continue on page 365 in your prayer book. Page 365. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's only Son, Jesus Christ. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.